Hey guys, so one of the things I love the most about Magic the Gathering is deck building. And this is specifically in uh, EDH, in Commander, where you make a deck out of a hundred singleton cards and a commander. So I, I feel like I enjoy the actual deck building aspect of it more than I do playing the game, as funny as it is to say that. So the other day I got a really cool idea, which was to go online and get one of those boxes of bulk commons and uncommons, like in the hundreds and thousands of cards for like $20, $25, and try to make a commander deck out of them. So that's what I did. I went out on Amazon and I bought this uh, Star City Games gold collection, which held a thousand cards, came with a couple rares, a couple foil rares, a couple of foil commons and uncommons, and then all of the rest of the cards were just commons and uncommons from a bunch of different sets. So I ordered it, I put it all down, and I started sorting through the cards. Uh, one of the foil rares that I got was a mono black legendary creature, but I didn't like that, so I didn't like that because then I would, I would ruin the deck building challenge that I had going on for myself, so I just put it away and then decided to look at the cards and see if I can make a commander deck out of that and then find a commander for it later on. So I started out by just sorting the cards out by individual colors, all the greens, reds, blues, blacks, multicolored, and artifacts. And I've divided them up into two piles from then on. In the first row were all of just all the subpar average cards. And then anything that actually had a semblance of a theme or that would work well in Commander, I put in the top row. And in the bottom row were all just all the foils and uh, rares that came in the box. As I was playing along, I noticed certain archetypes came out from the cards that I pulled out. There were a lot of plus one, plus one counters in both white and green, so that was the thing that I was trying out. In black and green, there was a lot of graveyard interaction and grave graveyard uh, returning to hand and returning to the field and interacting with the opponent's graveyard. Red had a lot of goblin creatures, and a, but not enough to like make a mono red deck out of. It was just a, like, a good amount. White had a lot of uh, token generation, but many different kinds of tokens and cards usually had like oh knights do this or your elf warriors do this so i couldn't just make a generic token deck because it really wouldn't work out i ultimately ended up picking a uh green black graveyard recursal deck that i'll go over later on when i show the entire deck profile so when i actually came to starting the deck i started with the uh artifacts trying to find as many uh mana rocks as i could and there weren't really a lot. Very, I think I found one that actually added in color. Everything else just added like a color that's man out of your mana pool, which worked out fine. I found a couple of uh, tokens that tap for mana. I think there was some clue stuff to draw cards in um, the blue side, but I ended up not using blue, so that didn't work out. There was very little single target removal or just removal in general. There, was, there wasn't a single board wipe at all 1,000 cards that I got. That was a bad thing. So from here on, I just started putting cards in uh, order by converted mana cost. Just starting out from the low end to the high end and just trying to make a reasonable curve putting in power cards or just things that worked in a multiplayer setting. After that, I moved on to green and tried to get as many uh, mana fixing cards as I could get because I started getting a three color deck, which is red, black, and green. After a while, because I realized it, it just wasn't enough to just do black and green. I needed some of the direct damage cards from red. So put all the mana rocks together, put them on the side, and just went on, created a solid curve, and just put in as many uh, green card fetchers, like land fetchers, and just creatures that tap for mana, put them all together. As for the creatures, I just looked for anything that had anything to do with any graveyard, and just try to jam it in there, try to keep it in a reasonable curve, in a reasonable mana curve, and just get everything going together. In the end, I'm actually pretty happy with the deck that I got. It seemed functional, it had a purpose, it was extremely weak, but I thoroughly enjoyed the challenge that came from making a deck out of just complete randomness. And I really recommend other people to do it. It's one of the funnest things that I've ever done, and I really hope I get to do it again someday. Okay, now onto the actual deck that I made, using the cards from the uh, gold collection. First off, I chose, instead of using the mono black commander that we got from the box, I decided that wasn't going to be really that much fun and not much of a challenge. I was just going to pick the best black cards out of all of them and then slam them together. So instead, I decided to get this guy. 
Gyrus Waker of Corpses. This is because he benefits from having a lot of monsters in the graveyard. So, <clears throat> this deck I mainly made it in uh, Golgari colors. Because as I was opening the cards and sorting them all out, I realized there was a lot of black and green cards that just dumped cards into the graveyard. But I didn't have enough of that to make an entire deck out of. So I pumped in a little bit of uh, token creations and sack outlets to just get a little bit of value out going. First off, as for noticeable lands that I put here, I got one Sorncord Desert, a Golgari Guildgate, an Evolving Wild, a Desert of the Fervent, a Warped Landscaped, and a Desert of the Indomitable. They're just uh, non-basic lands that I opened up that fit in color and were relatively useful. There's another one that I have over there that came in handy for something else. From there on, we move on to a uh, single target removal, which there was none of in there, and I basically only pulled out four cards in color that were even playable. One foil naturalize, which came out fine, just get rid of artifacts and enchantments that are in trouble. Uh, Titanic growth to work as a combat trick, just take out a bare creature. An oblivion strike, which is, I believe, the only card that I got in color that exiles a target permanent. And a Lightning Strike for direct damage, because I had nothing else in real life. As for mana generators, I got a Mannequin, an Opaline Unicorn, a Star Compass, a Seer's Lantern for uh, Mana Rocks as artifacts. I also got an Unbridled Growth to color fix, a Lone Larva to search out for basic lands, a Wild Wander Wanderer to search out for basic lands, and a Druid of the Cowl and a Na Naga Vit Vitalist to uh, tap for mana. Most of the deck is running green because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get enough land fast enough to have this work out. Now, as for one of the main strategies of this deck is to dump creature cards and instant sorceries into the graveyard. For that, we run one um, Automir Gloom, which uh, is an enchantment for two and uh, green. You pay one black and you put the top card of your library into your graveyard. And then at the beginning of your end step, if there are four or more card types amongst cards in your graveyard, you transform it. On the flip side, it is an Ancient of the Equinox, which is just a really big 4-4 trample hexproof creature. Which, it does just does something, I guess. You don't really want it to flip all that much. All in all, 4-4 isn't that much. But it's just a little thing to dump uh, cards into your graveyard. You get one Corpse Churn, which is an instant for one in the black. You put the top three cards of your library onto your graveyard, and then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. It just keeps the uh, dumping into the graveyard and then bringing stuff back to your hand so you can use it later. You want a Benefaction of Ronus, which is two in green, sorcery, reveal the top five cards of your library. You may put a creature card and or enchantment card from among them into your hand, and then you put the rest into your graveyard. It's just simple effects like this. You got a bit of revelation, which is three in a black. Look at the top four cards of your library, you put two of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard, and you lose two life. Scout of the border, same thing, reveal the top five cards this time. Put a creature card or a land card from among them into your hand, and then put the rest in your graveyard. This is why I chose this deck. There were so many cards that interacted with the graveyard in red and black in the thousand cards that I got that it just fit well. Got a dark bargain, you look at the top three cards of your library, put two of them into your hand, get them to your graveyard, and then it deals two damage to you. That is exactly the same as Bitter Revelation. They have the exact same effects of Bitter Revelation is three in a black and sorcery, dark bargain is three in a black and an instant. But the name is different, so you're good enough for commander. Sudden Reclamation is for 3 and a green, to 4 cards of your library into your graveyard, and then return a creature card or a land card, and a land card from your graveyard to your hand. Which is just... Like Scout the Borders, again. It just costs a little more and it's an instant. Not bad. Then you got a Sig... Sib Sig Host, which is 4 and a black for a 2-6 creature zombie. When it enters the battlefield, each player puts the top 3 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Just dumping more stuff into the graveyard. <clears throat> As to how to get stuff back, you I picked out these cards. Midnight Scavengers for 4 and a black 3-3, and when a Midnight Scavenger enters the battlefield, you may return a target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to your hand. It melds with Graphrath, but I don't own a copy of Graphrath, and it didn't come in the box, so we're just using it for that small effect. You got Dutiful Return, which is 3 and a black sorcery, returns to 2 target creature cards from your graveyard back to your hand. Dutiful Descendants, 2 and a black. When it, when it dies, you return another creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Works really good. Wander and Death, two and a black, and you return two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Cycles for two. 
Just for draw late game. So I'll just gain cards you need back. Now, just with those strategies of dumping cards in the graveyard or returning cards to your hand, I couldn't really make an entire deck out of that. I got a good chunk of it, but not enough. So I went off to another thing that I found out worked with um, dumping stuff into the graveyard, which is token generation. You start out with Aether Herder, when it enters the battlefield you get 2 energy, and whenever it attacks you may pay 2 if you do create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact token. You get Wolfbrain Elemental, 2 and 2 green with multi kicker green. When it enters the battlefield, put a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token to the battlefield for each time it was kicked. This card is going to be great once you have a lot of mana going. You top deck this, just create a bunch of tokens, all 2-2 two, two green wolf tokens for 1. That's perfectly fine. If underhanded designs, which is one out of the black, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This works with uh, server tokens that you create by other means, and also if anything happens, you could just use it as a four mana, sacrifice it to destroy our creature. Works out fine. You're really not going to get much out of a thousand random cards. Uh, Dragar and Fodder, you pay 1 and 1 black, 1 and 1 red, and you put 2 1 1 red goblin creature tokens to the battlefield. Just more tokens to sacrifice off. It of the Horrid Swarm is an 8 mana colorless Eldrazi insect with emerge 6 and 1 green. You can cast this spell by sacrificing a creature and paying the emerge cost reduced by that creature's converted mana cost. When you cast it, you put 2 1 1 creature instant tokens to the battlefield. Start off with that. Whirl Makers, just a 3 mana artifact. Pay 4, tap it, create a 1 1 colorless Doctor artifact creature token with flying. It, that feeds into your underhanded designs and any other sack outlets that I have going on. You got Rakasha Gravecaller, which is 4 and a black. You can exploit it. When this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When it enters the battlefield, you put 2 black black zombie creatures tokens into the battlefield. That is perfectly fine for 5 mana, and you have more than enough things to sacrifice. Then, now what do you do with these tokens? Well, you got uh, Gravoni Unhollowed. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on him. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that when you have a creature token and it dies, it does technically go into the graveyard for a split second before it fizzles out. So anything that says a creature needs to die or a token needs to die, all trigger off, which is good. Reaper of the Winds is a card that while I was looking at all of the cards and sorting them out, is the one that may gave me the idea to get this deck. It is two, one black, one green for a creature Gorgon. Whenever another creature dies, you scry one. You can pay one black, it gains death touch. You can play one in a green, and it gains text proof until end of turn. It's fine. Decaying Soil is one and two black. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a card in graveyard for the game. Threshold, whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from play, you may pay one. If you do, return that card to your hand. This card doesn't really fit in that well, because you're mainly dumping stuff from your deck into the graveyard and creating tokens. But it fits into the overall graveyard manipulation flavor, so I just put it in. I didn't really have that many options, to be honest. Now that you have all the tokens created, you need a way to sacrifice them. You have Morbid Curiosity, which is for 1 and 2 black. You can sacrifice an artifact or creature. You draw cards equal to the converted mana cost of Sacrifice Permanent. That's good card draw. Collateral damage, 1 red instant as an additional cost to cast collateral damage sacrifice creature. It deals 3 damage to target creature or player. This is a very bad lightning strike. But it's in flavor, it works with your mechanics, and you don't have anything better to run. Then Tusco Husk was 2 and a black, with a creature in Zombie Insect, you sacrifice another creature, and it gains 2 2 until turn. You use this to sack any uh, server artifact tokens, or any tokens you create for any other card, and it works out fine. Fleshback Marauder is 2 and a black, when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. This is really good if an opponent has a big creature that you need to get rid of that has hexproof. Or you need to get rid of something out of everybody's field. It does the job fine. You also have Driver of the Dead, which is 3 in a black. When it dies, you return a target creature card with number of mana cost 2 or less from your graveyard onto the battlefield. This card is not that good in this deck, but it just fits with the all graveyard flavor, so that's why I put it in. It's 5 and 2 black. When it enters the battlefield, you exile all cards from target opponent graveyards. You may play land cards exiled with it. You may cast non my cards exiled with it. You can't cast more than one spell this way each turn. This just gives you extra value late game, but other than that you probably don't want to sacrifice an entire opponent's graveyard when you have cards that can let you summon minions from their graveyards. Grim like these two. Grim return, two and a black. Choose target creature card in the graveyard that was put there from there. 
Grim Return is two and a black. Instant. Choose a target creature card in the graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Put that card into the battlefield under your control. Then a worse version of Grim Return is Gruesome Encore, which for two and a black, you put a target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. If that creature card would leave the battlefield, exile instead of putting it anywhere else. Now, with these two cards, you can either take an opponent's creature and try to attack with it, or just sacrifice it out. Really good. Other than that, though, you have uh, these three revolt cards from the uh, from the Kaladesh block. You got Silk Warrior Elite. It has Reach for 2-2. Two, two. It has Revolt. When it enters the battlefield of the permanent you control left the battlefield, this turn you draw a card. It had an Herbalist with Revolt. When it enters the battlefield, if, if a permanent you control left the battlefield, this turn you add two green mana to your mana pool. So it basically costs free if something left the field already. Lifecraft Cavalry, four and a green, trample. If it enters the battlefield with two 1 1 counters, if permanent you control left the battlefield this turn. There were other revolt cards that uh, came with the thousand pack, none of which really worked out that well. These three cards are just the last bit of uh, stuff that I put in here. It was Warfire Javelier. It entered the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. You run a fair amount here that this will probably end up doing 5 to 6 damage once you're at 4, since you're dumping a lot of cards from your graveyard into your, from your deck into your graveyard. The Kasik Dire Swine, which is 4 and 2 green, with Delirium, has trample as long as there are 4 more card types among cards in your graveyard. You have lands, instant sorceries, creature cards, and enchantments and artifacts. You're going to get this off by the time you cast it. But other than that, it's just a 6-6 six, six for 6 with a uh, trample. It's fine. Scourge Wolf is 2 black for 2-2 two, two with first strike with Delirium has double strike as long as there are 4 more card types in your graveyard. This card, I just put it in because I was running out of options, but it works pretty well. I playtested this deck out with a couple of my other commander decks and it got beat more often than not, but it managed to squeeze out a win or two later on. Now, these two cards I put in here simply because I needed to fill up space. I put in a Sage of the Ancient Lore, a Wood Weaver's Puzzle Knot, and a Brazen Buccaneers to try to land face a little bit. Now, as for draw cards, I actually have quite a bit. I have Lift Fast. You draw two cards, lose two life, and get two energy. Keldon Raider. Enter the battlefield. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot. Two colorless artifact. Enter the battlefield. You draw a card. You can pay three, sacrifice it, and draw another card. Grave Birthing. Two and a black. Instant. Devoid. Target opponent exiles a card from his or her graveyard. You put a 1-1 colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token that you can sack to add one to your mana pool. And then you draw a card. Spawning Bed is a land with tap. Add one to your mana pool. Or you can pay six, sacrifice it, and put three 1-1 colorless Eldrazi creature tokens onto the battlefield. And they all tap for mana. Now... As for what you're actually going to be using Gyrus's effect for are these really big creature cards that I put in, in here. I put in a Sea and Wild Ravager. It has Tribute 6, so it can either be a 6-6 six, six or a 12-12, twelve, twelve, depending on what your opponent chooses. You have Balgoth's Gorger, which is 2-2 two two green with Kicker 4. If it was kicked, enter the battlefield with 3 one, one counters on it. It's just a good card. Savage Mentma is 4, a red and a green, flying 4-4, four, four, and whenever it attacks, you get 6 mana back in red and green. Then you have 3 worms that I put in here. You have Primordial Worm, Basswood Gorger, and Greater Sandworm. And then you find off with Neferox Overlord of Grixis, which is the commander that came with the deck, that came with the thousand cards, I mean. But I just put him in here because he's a really big beater and is in colors. Also, he's a foil rare, which is really pretty. Overall, this is actually really fun and challenging, trying to make a commander deck out of a thousand rare, I mean a thousand random cards. And I feel like I would do this again if I ever save up enough money. It was really fun. Let me know if you guys like this, and if you did, I'll try to do it again once I get some more money going around. Bye.